Hey guys, Matt, Iron Trap Garage, and today we're going to be doing a little bit of engine work, and this is going to be an update, hopefully, fingers crossed, on the 39 Mercury that we pulled out of the garage or shack in uh, Jersey, and uh, you guys saw me uh, fight many times and lose with that engine that was pretty heavily stuck, so um, I had a lot of time invested in that engine, and, and really, uh, I wasn't having a great feeling about it. So we started looking around in our stash of engines we have at the warehouse. We had a really good candidate that um, I bought with a bunch of other stuff and um, thought would be a good engine. So what we did was we worked on getting this thing put together with a good distributor that we, we keep to run the engines and, and different stuff and a carb and we hooked it up on the run stand and it fired up almost instantly and ran and proceeded to smoke the whole entire shop out, which was fun. Um, that's right. All right. But we did get it running, it had okay oil pressure on it and all that good stuff. So um, we thought it would be a good time to take it apart and hop it up. I don't know, I'm hesitant about that idea, but I feel like we have to because it's, uh, it's necessary that if we're gonna put it back in, we can't just put it back in stock. So what we have is a bunch of, we just went into the archives, pulled out some sort of common, I guess you could say common parts, but not as valuable stuff. This car obviously is closed hood, so I don't really want to put like super rare speed equipment on it that you'll never see, because um, the hood will be closed 100% of the time, because that's the type of car that you don't really open the hood. So uh, I have, we have an old Fenton intake, 2.2 intake, and, uh, which is probably more unusual, we have a set of old 59 AV style, 24 stud center water outlet uh, Fenton heads, uh, that I've had sitting around for a rainy day project, and today is that rainy day. It's actually raining now. Um, we also have a Winfield cam I think we grabbed yes, from the stash. Right. So I had an old Winfield, I think it's an SU-1A if I remember correctly, um, cam, fairly mild, kind of like in between cams. So uh, I've had that sitting around. We have some adjustable tappets, um, ISKI springs. So what we're gonna do is, we know it's a good running engine, we're gonna do a little bit of exploratory work and take the heads off, take the pan off, check it out. Number one, make sure that nothing is like completely screwed on it and we thought it was okay. Um, and then number two, we're gonna take it apart and hop it up a little bit, put fresh head gaskets on, all that good stuff, put it back together. And then if we, hopefully, if we can get it to run uh, <laughs> on the stand, then we're gonna put it in the Mercury for a future video. So that is my long-winded intro. We're gonna get to work. Uh, we gotta get dirty. So, this thing has definitely been uh, gone through, maybe rebuilt at some point in its life. It's got adjustable tappets already in it. Valve springs are, are nice and clean. You can see it's got new uh, circlips in there. The valley is not full of gunk. Yeah, very clean. So this thing has definitely been uh, apart before. We also noticed that, I'm pretty sure it has a aluminum timing gear in here, which we will take apart uh, shortly. Um, we got all the head bolts off, so we're gonna tap on the heads and try and get them off and then we can take a look and see what the bore looks like and the valves and all that stuff. The cam, the stamping on the front of the cam looks like it's just a stock stamp so I don't think it's, and it didn't sound like it had any kind of cam in it. So with these a lot of times if, what I like to do, if it's an iron head, um, I like to just tap on the corners with a hammer. Obviously if you have aluminum heads you don't want to do that. And if you have an engine that hasn't been sitting outside for 110 years, 
This one does not look like it's been underwater. You can usually knock it loose from the gasket by just hitting on the corners and then wiggle it off. So we'll see. This was not staged. Yeah. It's clean. There's some rust crap in the heads, of course. But yeah. In the water, but that's we'll clean all that out. I have sleeves, but yeah, it? it's got a it's got sleeves in it. All right, so Mike and I uh, got all the valves back in. I helped Mike uh, set the valve lash on everything, and uh, we were able to look up on, I think it was the hammer, the Ford barn. Mike was able to find for this Winfield cam what the clearances were, so we went ahead and went around the block, set all those, everything's pretty good with that. This block wasn't drilled for, um, to stick a, like a, a, a drill bit or a drift or whatever in there to hold the lifters. So a couple of them, they were a little difficult with the tool. We ended up having to take the valve in and out, the valve assembly in and out a couple times to get really, really close. And then Mike was able to adjust it the last little bit uh, in the engine. But uh, when everything's all nice and lubed and, and easy to take apart, you have a helper. It's really pretty quick to take that circlip out and take the whole valve assembly out um, to take the lifter out and rather than fighting with it all the time. So what I'm working on is further cleaning out this block. Um, anytime you get an old flathead, even ones that have been rebuilt, but by a, I don't wanna say backyard rebuild, um, but some of the older rebuilds or even stuff that you see that, you know, uh, a guy rebuilds them down the street, he may not bake the blocks all the way out or fully flush them out. And even when you do do that, it's very difficult to get into the, like these little um, nooks and crannies that are in the bottom of the block. There's a little area where um, basically water could still sit and rust forms and, and it becomes a problem. So I found that it's best to use compressed air. Um, you could flush it out with water, which we're gonna do once we get a little further with this, we're gonna also do, but with the just a good um, air nozzle and a magnet, you can get a lot of it out. So you can see, I just stuck this in the, um, down in the center, lower center water passage and uh, blew some air and you saw how much rust just is coming up. So that rust is what's gonna get caught in your coin system. It's gonna block your radiator, and I see people all the time um, that are on the different groups and stuff um, going on and on how they have to have an aluminum radiator and this and that. Honestly, if you have a block that's, that's cleaned out good and you have a good radiator that isn't blocked, um, 
or plugged, uh, you should be fine with a normal radiator, you know, an old radiator, a brass or copper uh, type radiator. So um, a lot of times it's just that the, all the crap in the block will plug your radiator. And I don't care if it's aluminum or copper or what it is, it's still not gonna work well, so. So when we first started doing this, we were getting huge chunks out of there. At this point, I'm down to where we're not getting a ton, um, but still, I am getting some out of there. If this was a block that we were, you know, that was totally disassembled, getting rebuilt um, from the ground up, you know, this would be a different story. But since this is a good running engine, we're trying to just um, clean up and regasket and put some new parts on. Um, we don't have the ability to do that, so this is the only option, really. So. Look at that. Just from that little bit there in that end port. Uh, this end port, you know, is down where the bottom, there's a, like a valley in there where there's, you know, that's deeper than you can get with anything. And I got all of that rust out of there. So every time I'm doing that, I'm getting some. Eventually it's, it's kind of maddening because you'll, you'll do this for days and days and days and still be getting it. Okay, so we had to wait for a part in the mail. I didn't have any extra of these. So if you're doing this uh, swap of the cam on an earlier engine and you want to, um, depending on what you're running here, a lot of the cams that you're going to see are 59 AB style. This little snout here is a lot longer on the earlier engines. And when you put this style cam in, but you want to run a three bolt um, style distributor, uh, it will not be long enough. So you will need one of these little buttons. You can get them in a lot of the um, online uh, hot rod store type places sell them or Ford suppliers. So basically this little button um, is offset and it will only go, it will, you can put it 180 off but what will happen is your distributor will fit so that's 180 off and it's not centered on the cam so you'll see there's a, it's hard to see probably but there's a gap here and it's tight over there so we know that that's off so you can line it up so it's the same diameter as the camshaft there on the end and that will take up that spacing the difference between the two of these and you can just run your three bolt distributor so um, when you're dealing with a stock engine this is something that you will definitely run into so now we can put our timing cover back on I think it needs more throttle.
All right, so we got everything hooked up. We made some fuel lines, all that stuff. We got the fuel in here. Um, typical Stromberg stuff we're working on with the needle and seat kit and making sure everything stops leaking. So that will probably be a battle. Um, and we have just our mock-up distributor hooked up for now that we ran it on before. So we're gonna just make, see if we can get this thing to run idle for a little bit. We don't have the radiator on yet. And then if we can hear it make some noise, then we can go a little further. All right, ready? And our starter solenoid took a shit, of course. So we're back to jumping stuff. Ready? Yep. So we got the engine to fire, make noise with our windfield cam, our Fenton heads, our dual carb intakes, some old Strombergs that we cobbled together, and it at least started in idle. Now we don't have a radiator on, and uh, we need to mess with the carbs, and obviously, as a lot of people know, there's another day's worth of work to make this thing like a functioning, fully running engine that we can do, but as always, we're behind on videos and we wanted to cut ourselves off and just kind of end it right here. So what we're gonna work on in between next time is we're gonna work on getting everything buttoned up so this thing is ready to go, turnkey, um, and it is all set so we can drop it right into Mercury and in, in the next video we're gonna you know, put this good running engine in the Mercury and hopefully fire it up in that and we can move the car around. That is the goal, fingers crossed. Uh, but we have a lot of work to do in between then, and of course we gotta pull out that old engine and all that stuff, so. Um, but this is great, we have a cool hopped up engine, I'm really excited about it, it's gonna be awesome to see this down in the engine bay of the Mercury, and uh, I can't wait to drive that thing. So this is a small step, but it is a, uh, it's gonna be a huge one once we get that thing running. So thank you guys for following along, really appreciate it, and uh, we'll catch you next time, see ya.